When you think of silent hunters, would a 15-foot, 800-pound lizard come to mind? Yet alligators are one of the best equipped silent hunters in the wild. Alligators are almost invisible because of their camo skin and ability to quietly slip underwater and stay for nearly an hour before coming up for air. They're also very patient and wait for food to come to them. But when it's time to strike, an alligator can jump five feet in the air and run faster than a horse for a short distance. But it's the power of the alligator that is most impressive. Alligators have the most ferocious bite in the animal kingdom with a crushing force of 3,000 pounds per square inch. That's more powerful than hyenas, lions, and even sharks. So let's join Dr. Martin and Dan the Animal Man to learn more about this amazing reptile that God created in our next creature feature, Alligators, the Power Lizard. Thank you for being here with us. We're at Dan Breeding's Animal Sanctuary, Creatures of Creation, and we're going to look at some very interesting animals. Uh, I've got a small one right here. It's kind of cute, but there are bigger ones that get a whole lot bigger. And Dan, you have one of those here right now, and this fella wants to get on top and take a ride. Uh, <laughs> He says, yeah. I'm getting out of here. <laughs> yeah, Dr. Martin. Well, those, strong. Oh, yeah, those little guys, they can be very feisty, but they need to be because the same mom that will guard them with their life, with her life, when they're in the nest, and the same mom that will carry them around in their mouth for a couple weeks after they hatch is the same mom that will actually eat that alligator if she sees it a couple weeks after they leave her. Oh, no. Well, no, wait a minute. <laughs> um, they're used to water, and I am too. And, um, but you said the mom carries them in her mouth? They, they, she carries dozens of them in her mouth to protect them for wow. a couple of weeks after they hatch. So she doesn't eat them? Nope, not, not until they leave. When they leave, and then if she sees them a couple of weeks later, she will eat them. Wow. They're very opportunistic creatures. Yes. They, that, that mothering drive, that nurturing drive kicks in, but just as soon as they're big enough to leave and it kicks out, they're on their own and they're fair game. One of the features about alligators that convinces me that it, that it was created is the mother's instinct to protect the babies. Because the number one threat to an alligator is when it's young, that's when it's most vulnerable, is other alligators eating them. And that's what accounts for half of alligator deaths, is other alligators coming in and eating the babies. That's why it needs its mother. Dan had a baby alligator that he wanted me to uh, reach down there and grab it and bring it up and he'd already told me about its sharp teeth. Fortunately, he reached out and grabbed it, but it was he was fast. It was like, boom, and he had it just like that. And then he hands it to me, and, uh, and I'm still not sure what to do with this little thing. Of course, then it wet in my hand, and I'm thinking, now what do I do? But I'm holding it about as, as, with about as much strength as I have, and it's trying to torque. Amazing, different, a different type of muscle. Than, uh, than we have. And this creature here is, is quite large. He's seven feet, about 130 pounds, but he's nowhere near full grown. Dr. Martin, this animal right here will get up to a 13 to 15 feet on average. Wow. But the largest on record, get this, 23 feet, one inch. What would that weigh? 1,000 pounds. Alligator should be called a silent hunter because it lurks in quietness. And it's one of these hunters that uh, um, will wait very patiently for a very long time and it's trying to remain unseen by what it's trying to eat, by its prey. And one of the ways it does that is by remaining partially submerged. So if it's underwater or behind the bushes and the rushes, and then it's, it's out of sight and it remains out of sight. And when it's ready to strike and and eat, it's going to, of course, not be silent <laughs> for that one moment that it strikes. But that's why we call it a silent hunter is because it, it lurks very quietly, tries to remain hidden, 
and then it'll attack at the right time. What would be the difference between a crocodile and an alligator? They look pretty much the same. That's a good point. That's a, that's a really popular question. Mm -hmm. You know, crocodiles, um, this, this is a great way to, to tell you. The crocodiles, they don't have a rounded snout like this. A crocodile would have a very pointy snout, kind of like a, an arrow. Okay. Now, crocodiles, if they had their mouth shut like Augie here, you would still see lots of teeth sticking out oh. as opposed to just a couple teeth. You see how he is just a couple yes, teeth sticking yes. out? Mm -hmm. Crocodiles, they have teeth sticking out, sticking up, sticking in. They're all over the place. Now, babies, babies have a lot of teeth that show. A lot of teeth. And you know what? Their teeth are really neat. They're kind of like sharks. They actually shed their teeth their entire life. They rejuvenate their teeth. It's kind of like a, their tooth is like a sugar cone with no ice cream in it. Oh. And inside, and I knew you'd appreciate this being a dentist, yes. the, the tooth actually grows inside the other sugar cone and pushes wow. it out. And so when that tooth drops, there's that other tooth already there ready to c continue to drop in as another tooth is, they'll go through 2,000 plus teeth in their lifetime. Wow, and, but a crocodile is more like a razor blade type thing. It yes, slices, absolutely, right? yes, absolutely. They even have a bevel on their teeth. They're long, they're sharper, pointier, and uh, crocodiles are a different type of beast. Crocodiles are animals that are actually really ravenous compared to alligators. You know, we don't even really need to fear too many alligators out in the wild because even if we're in Florida where they're the most prevalent, because alligators, we're not really on their menu unless you're small. So that's why children should never go down to the water's edge without an adult, even if you can swim, because alligators, they're very opportunistic. If they see an opportunity to eat, they're, they're gonna eat. And that would be a, 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 you know, a middle, middle school, junior high, wow. down. Yes. An adult, you know, if you stand your ground, or better yet, run the other way, you'll be safe. Well, I understand that they can digest almost anything. They anything. can digest Bones what? and all. Antlers? Absolutely. Wow. Yeah. Well, I, they have little stones, like in their stomach, uh, they're called gastroliths, and with those stones, they grind up their food. So they swallow food pretty yeah, much whole. Kind of like they? a chicken gizzard, you know. Oh, yeah. they, they they're able to 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 tumble that stuff around in there, yes. and it's a it's just an amazing animal. Why is it that an alligator can sit and lurk and wait and wait and wait? Sometimes, if it's big enough and ate a meal big enough, it can wait for weeks or even months not moving for months. It's definitely designed to be able to do that. And then when it's time to move, it waits. And then when there's food available, then it will suddenly move with a burst. Uh, I couldn't do that. I couldn't wait that long. I'm not designed that way. The alligators have these little bumps around on their face. Crocodiles have the bumps all over. Alligators mostly around on their face. Those are little sensory uh, organs. There's a, there's a nerve that goes into that bump, back through into the bone, and then up to the brain. And it is so sensitive that if it's in the rain, if a bird drops into the water in a rainstorm, that cr alligator knows lunch just dropped, and it'll go after the bird. Even though it can't see the bird, it can sense with those very sensitive things, the difference between a raindrop and a bird dropping, dropping in. Where does that come from? How, how would something like that evolve? What, what would cause that to happen? I can't, I can't think of anything. It, it, that's one of the ways it finds its food, is by the ripples in the water. And so it's not gonna eat a whole lot uh, in certain situations unless it has those sensory glands. <laughs> Some of the most amazing features are its Mercury outboard engine. You know, that engine propels it in the water 30 miles an hour Whoa. Um, because fish swim really fast. Yes, and that's they do. what God designed it to mainly eat. That's its staple. It'll also eat snakes and birds and things. It's got web feet like a duck that also help it to swim fast and to steer. Yes. Now, some of my favorite design features to share with folks is up here because we like to use the same kind of concept. You know, lots of men and women get really pompous and arrogant about inventing things, you know? Yes. Um, nose plugs for swimming, ear plugs, and my favorite, the goggle. But, but God, our creator, the Lord of the heavens, the, the, the king of all kings, the, the author of the most important book we could ever read is actually the ultimate designer because he designed 
the original pair of goggles. Check this out, Dr. Martin. The nicotating membrane. Watch this eye. Watch how he opens his eye, and then a second later, his goggle. Whoa. Did you see that? Isn't, Isn't that, that neat? Something? Watch, I'll yes. show you again. Here it comes. That's his nicotating membrane. That's his built-in pair of goggles. So what he does, when he goes underwater, he holds his breath, and he flips on his pair of goggles so he can see his favorite food, which is... Fish? Small children that disobey their parents. Oh, no, that's just true. kidding. No, that's just true. kidding. No, they actually eat fish. And you know, you might think about how does he do that? You know, he's sitting here breathing oxygen right now. Most people are like, wow, well, how does he do that? How well, does yeah, he open he his choke? mouth? I mean, well, God, again, being the creator, he set his creation up for success because when they do what they're designed to do, they bring glory to him. Mm. So what he did is he designed him with a special valve. Check this out. Watch this. Come on up here, Dr. Martin, and check this out. Look at this. There's his goyular valve or his epiglottis valve. Whoa. And that's how he closes the back of his throat in order to do what he's designed to do and do it really well. Is that amazing? Yes. Of course it is. <laughs> As Dan and I were talking, we uh, discussed this like a valve in the back of the throat of the alligator that completely seals off the back of the throat so that like if it uh, catches a big fish under the water, it can open its mouth, it can grab the fish, uh, it can close its mouth, and it doesn't, it doesn't fill up its stomach and throat and lungs and everything else with water. So it's, it has a special design there to help protect it uh, from drowning. But without that one little flap, he'd have big problems eating. And without eating, he'd have big problems surviving. So it looks like God gave him the flap of, 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 uh, that will close the back of his mouth. The female alligator lays a lot of eggs, I understand. And there's special things about those eggs, Dan. Could you tell us something about the alligator's eggs? That's one of the neatest things to talk about, Dr. Martin. They, they, they lay over 50 eggs, these monstrous nests. They bury them down in there. The female guards them with her life. The nest? Yes, the nest. Oh. And then she tends to it, working on the humidity and all. But you know, the hotter the nest, the more males are born or hatch out of the eggs. And the cooler the nest during the season, the more females. So like hot eggs would be more male, yep. cold eggs, more female. Is that amazing? Wow, and there must be a reason for that. I guess we don't know what that is, is that right? Yeah, but you know what, that's the thing about it, Dr. Martin. It's not important to know everything about everything. If we, if we stay steady and, and look to God's word and know that he calls us to walk by faith, not by sight, mm -hmm. that's the true answer because we're not gonna have all the answers. Because if, you know, if we could figure out how God did everything, then why do we need him? Amazingly, evolutionists have dated that rock layer where the alligators first appear at around 200 million years. And in 200 supposed million years, how much has the alligator changed? Zero, none. It looks exactly the same today as it did in the fossil record. So this is characteristic, this is not an anomaly. Whenever we see creatures in the fossil record, they typically look just like the creatures that are alive today. Now I've been studying evolution most of my life and it's like, they don't have the answers. I'm thinking, okay, uh, give me the answer for why the alligator does all this. Well, time, it's just time. Well, I don't think the Bible talks about time. No. And I think that we, we, have a, we have a better explanation. There is a designer, he is a creator. He knows what he's doing. He created everything with everything it needs. And he said, what's he say? He says, nothing is impossible for him. That's right. And nothing is impossible for him. So all we can do is say, well, God, look at this beautiful thing that you have done. And then we study it. He wants us to study what he's made sure. and then give him glory and give him, give him thanks. So we'll study these, you've been studying these. And there's all kinds of very fascinating things. Just, just about an alligator. Who would think about that? They just sit around in the swamp and don't do anything. That's right. But they're amazingly designed for what they do. When we observe the alligator, we can see some of the characteristics of God. The alligator is a silent hunter, as is God. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. The alligator is relentless and won't let go. Jesus said, And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, 
neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. The alligator is powerful, but God is the Almighty. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. The Bible tells us over and over that creation is shouting from every point in the universe that God is the designer and creator of everything we see and don't see, including the wild animal kingdom, miraculous creations of God. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him.